Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is a walkthrough of one of the exercises in Zed Shaw's book, Learn Python the Hard Way. If you go to learnpythonthehardway.org and click on Read the Free HTML Online, it'll take you to the table of contents. And the one that we're working on right now is number 22, exercise 22, What Do You Know So Far? If you click on that, it'll take you right here. And this one's a little different. All it's asking us to do is go back through the previous 21 exercises and write down any new symbols, any new words, anything that was new. And then try to go through and make sure you remember all of them. So I think people are going to have different responses to this one. I went back and tried writing a text document that had everything in it. Um, let me show you what I have. Now, I wrote mine in a program called ByWord. It's just a text file. You could write it in Text Wrangler Notepad++ also. I just like this. And um, don't get disturbed by the asterisks and the stuff. That's because this document is written in what's called Markdown format. I'm, anyhow, I like it. So um, here is the exercise that we're supposed to do right there. And here's what I found. Exercise zero. The new stuff for me was make dir and cd and ls. That's stuff from the command line crash course as well. Exercise one, uh, print, which means, again, display stuff in the console. Exercise two, the octothorpe, or the pound sign, or the hash, which could be used to comment, uh, put in a comment, or otherwise disable a line of code so it doesn't run. Exercise three, we had plus, minus, the slash for division, the asterisk for multiplication, the percent sign, which is also used uh, in the modulo slash modulus, less than, greater than, less than, equal, greater than, equal. I had to look up, by the way, the distinction between modulus and modulo. Uh, the modulus is the divisor. Modulo is, I like this, the relational form. So um, in A mod B, if you wrote it that way, you B is the modulus, because it's the thing you're dividing by, but you would read it as A modulo B. So there you have it. In four, we talked about underscores and variable names, as well as floating point versus integer numbers and how to use those. In five, we talked about format strings. That's the things where you have a string and you put in this little percent sign s. It's like a variable. And then you have a percent, and then after, uh, after the string, you have a percent, and then you have the values to fill it in with. And percent d for digits, percent r for raw data or really representation. Exercise six, we talked about single and double quotes. Exercise seven, uh, plus for joining strings without spaces and comma for joining strings with spaces between. In exercise eight, we talked about the Boolean values uh, or keywords true and false that don't need quotes. In exercise nine, we talked about the backslash, which can be used to escape characters. So they appear in a string, but you don't want to print something literally as what it is. You want to read it as a command. The backslash allows you to do that. So for instance, backslash n, this one right here, is the command for a new line in the middle of a string. Also, we learned about triple quotes, which can use to begin and end a long, uh, several lines of text. In exercise 10, learn how to use the double, black the double backslash as a way of printing a single backslash within a string. The backslash single quote, to put a single quote within a string, especially if that string is uh, set off by single quotes. Same thing for double quote, uh, backslash R is a carriage return. Uh, similar to a new line. Backslash G is a tab within the line. And for the triple quotes, you can also use triple single quotes. It's, you know, it's up to you. Uh, exercise 11, we talked about raw input. And that is a uh, command that waits for a person to type in something. And as soon as they hit return, it's got it. Uh, and we also did it where you could do a comma and put some prompt text on another line. But exercise 12 shows us another way to do raw input and put the prompt text right here in the parentheses after it. We also talked about looking stuff up uh, in the command uh, line interface. You could type in pydoc and then whatever it is you're looking for. So raw input or open or file or OS or sys or whatever you want. Exercise 13 talked about arguments, pass, import, argv, the argument variables, packing and unpacking values, and module. Uh, that's the code you get through libraries. Exercise 14, we talked about prompt to get information from users. Exercise 15, open the dot operator, which is used to join a function like read or close to an object like the, a text file that's been saved as an object.
Let's see here. We have reading and writing files with W for write mode, R for read mode, A for append, and then the W plus, R plus, and then truncating to delete the contents, W write to write into a file, information through PyDoc, and then the semicolon, which you can use to put a whole string of commands in a single line, and this will separate them the way you would normally do by hitting a new line. We talked about OS path and the exists function, which lets you know whether a particular file you're referring to already exists. We talked about def, def as a way of defining custom functions and the uh, star args, but better to just put the list of arguments next to the function name. And then, you know, the colon and then the indenting that you use to uh, mark the block in defining a function. 19 is just more information on variables and functions. 20 introduces .seek, a way of finding a position within a particular file. Uh, the important one here is that seek zero goes to the beginning of a file because it's byte zero. And then um, another function, dot read line for reading an entire single line within a document. You specify them by the line, by the line numbers. Uh, the plus equals is an increment function. We didn't talk about those, but uh, Zed refers to them in his sort of you know extra learning stuff. We'll come up against those later. And then finally in 21, we talked about return, a way that you can have a function calculate or create a value and return makes it available to use in a variable or some other function. Anyhow, that's what I got out of the um, text so far, the new words, terms, and symbols. And hopefully you've gone through and found a list maybe similar to this. Maybe there's some other things you added, um, but there's no one correct answer to this. So it's just a way of reviewing what you have. Anyhow. Hope it's making sense so far. Let's see you for the next exercise.